Historically, this has always been a bad time for video game releases. It's the calm before the holiday storm, so there's usually not many game releases coming out within the mid to late summer. And that's totally fine because we usually have E3 where the big game publishers announce all their big games. So if we don't have something to play right now, we at least have something to look forward to. Plus, you know, the holidays are just around the corner. This year, there was no E3. There have been some announcements, but they've been seemingly underwhelming. Things are happening this year, and there are games coming, but where are they? I'm starting to feel a little bit pessimistic about it myself. Thank you, Trade, for sponsoring this video. It's surprisingly difficult to go out and find artisanal coffee. And who wants to go out anymore anyway? Trade easily finds new coffee for you from the nation's top roasters and delivers it right to your door. Just take their short quiz asking you how you traditionally make your coffee and what tastes you prefer. Trade will then pick a coffee for you or you can pick one yourself, set a delivery frequency, and that's it. Change your preferences however much you'd like if you want to keep trying something different. As you can see, I just got an espresso machine, so I switched my preferred coffee method to espresso, and I'm... Uh, damn it. Still new to this. Click the link below to get 30% off your first bag when you sign up, and free shipping is included. All right, okay, all right. If you love coffee and you love making it yourself, this is a no-brainer. Damn, that's good. So click that link in the description below and thank you, Trade, for helping support the channel and also for giving me the goods. Okay, so there have been some big recent games. The Last of Us Part Two. I'm only halfway through it, but so far, I love it, regardless of what everybody says. Ghost of Tsushima, I'm looking forward to this Friday, but I don't know when the hell I'm gonna play that. Valorant and Hyperscape, I would love to try those games out. There are only two types of videos I ever see on Valorant, and it's either really slow moving headshot compilations or just absolutely racist and obscene voice chat. Ninjala, eh. The release schedules of Nintendo and Microsoft have been the most barren. Xbox gets a little bit of a pass because do they even really have any exclusives anymore? But Nintendo scares me. We've got Paper Mario the Origami King coming out this Friday, but that's it. And it's not like that's it for a little while, that's it for the entire rest of the year. And this is an issue that I've been worrying about since the beginning of the year. This is the biggest game that Nintendo has a confirmed release date for this entire year. So fair warning, it's all downhill from here. Now, I'm sure that they'll announce some things for later on in the year, but when? They just made a big stink about a third party Bakugan game coming out in November. Is, is that it? Is that your holiday slate? So I think that there's three core reasons why there's not that many games right now, or there's seemingly less games than normal in the pipeline. If I had to bet, I'd guess that sometime soon we'd be hearing about what Nintendo has to offer within the later part of the year, but it's just really bizarre to me that the only thing they have is Bakugan. So here's why I think game development has been slowed. This might seem obvious, but COVID-19 hit every industry all over the world really hard. Game development is a job that most can do from home, but this also comes with a huge dip in morale. I'm sure you've seen this in many different forms. Being forced to stay home means that people have more time on their hands, but being home all of the time and the severity of the pandemic that's looming just outside your door really just sucks the motivation out of people. I mean, I've worked from home before all of this and I still do my job, but I, for whatever reason, I haven't checked my email in months. <laughs> many, many games are experiencing delays and they've cited the pandemic as one of the causes. The Last of Us Part Two was one of them. Ghost of Tsushima was delayed from June to July. Outer Worlds on Switch, Ninjala, 
There's an entire Wikipedia article detailing the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the video games industry. Cyberpunk 2077 was originally supposed to be released in April. Then it was delayed to September and now delayed again until November. They didn't specifically cite the virus as the reason, but I'm willing to bet it at least had a little bit to do with it. So if there's this many releases that we know about, how many are there that just aren't being worked on, had development pushed, or just straight up aren't happening right now because of the state of the world? The second reason it seems like a bad time for video games right now is because of the cancellation of E3, which is also in effect of this terrible pandemic. I'm not happy about the circumstances, but I'm very happy that E3 is canceled. F*** you, E3. I hope you never come back. You're a piece of sh**. The E3 convention would have been June 9th, with announcements from the big console manufacturers and publishers starting as early as June 4th. This is a time when, normally, game companies rush to get their games and hardware shown in front of the media. It's a time when all the big announcements happen, and there's a lot of hype around these big announcements. It's a media spectacle. There's a lot of eyes on the industry in this one week. Some games that might not have been a big deal originally might get highlighted just because everyone has their eyes glued to the announcements that week. Well, E3 didn't happen that week, meaning there was no unified deadline for every big video game announcement. Hardly any companies made announcements that week. Most companies took this as an opportunity to keep working and push off the announcements they might have had. So now, announcements are staggered or not happening at all. Nintendo kind of alluded to how they just might not do directs anymore. They announced Paper Mario all by itself in May. It's possible that was supposed to be a big E3 feature and they had to get the news out because the game was slated for release just two months later. Sony revealed the PlayStation 5 relatively on time. It was actually originally scheduled for the 4th, which would have lined up pretty well with when their E3 press conference would have been. But it was postponed to the 11th due to the George Floyd protests and memorial services. Microsoft has stuck with their inside Xbox events that nobody likes. Later this month, we will have more info on Halo Infinite, so there's that at least. We still don't even know what these consoles are gonna cost. We usually get price information at E3, so we're a little bit late in the game for that kind of information. Summer Game Fest is around to try to keep track of all of these announcements, and they're doing their best, but it is, for the most part, a hot mess of developers and publishers and console manufacturers just kinda doing their own thing. I didn't even know Ubisoft was having an event until after it happened. The big reveal there was Far Cry 6, which is coming out next year. Although the Watch Dogs Legion cinematic trailer was fucking awesome. I, I wish the rest of the game looked anything close to that. EA actually had a pretty good digital conference a few weeks ago announcing Apex Legends for Switch and Star Wars Squadrons coming out later this year as well. But there's no Bethesda conference. There's no Square conference. And even the conferences that we have, it seems like we're not getting as many big announcements as we otherwise would have. But there's also one last thing that might be holding these publishers back. A lot of what's coming out at the end of the year is for the new consoles. Because Microsoft and Sony are being weird about their new hardware announcements, it means that developers and publishers might have to keep their games a secret for longer than they normally would have. For example, we had no idea that Insomniac has been hard at work on Spider-Man Miles Morales. Who knows what we'll be seeing on the Microsoft side soon. There's also this weird sort of nebulous gray area, games that are enhanced on the next-gen consoles like GTA V or more recently Far Cry 6 which you can pre-order for a Series X, but not PlayStation 5. Although it does say you can upgrade for free if you get the PS4 version. And that's another thing, we're still not even sure what this whole smart delivery, new console situation, enhanced version is even gonna look like. 
we now know that games might be costing $70. Certain publishers might be charging more for the next gen version. People might be charging more for the ability to upgrade to the next gen version. There's still a lot of questions that need answered in that department too. But games that are enhanced, like Cyberpunk, can show off what they have and then say, oh yeah, by the way, it'll look like this on the new consoles. What I'm trying to say is you won't have a Watch Dogs type situation on your hands. That game was announced way before the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One were announced, but it was very clearly a next gen title. These new consoles also mean the end of the current generation's life cycle. Developers are very familiar with the hardware now, so this time period has the potential for some of the best games of the generation. The Last of Us, GTA V, Bioshock Infinite, all came out in 2013, the last year of that console generation. However, it also means developers might be taking the time to wait to be featured on the new hardware. And developing for new hardware takes time because it's unfamiliar territory. Developers have just finished mastering the old hardware, now they're basically starting from scratch again. And not every developer is privileged enough to receive dev kits. And those dev kits can be expensive. It always feels like a lull right before new consoles come out. The calm before the storm. Luckily, smart delivery and enhanced PS5 titles will make the transition a little bit easier for everybody involved. Personally, I'm juggling between a lot of different games right now. I'm bored of Animal Crossing already. I kind of did everything that I wanted to do with my island there. I'm still playing Super Smash Bros. Ultimate a lot. I'm still on that Elite Smash grind, but that game came out in 2018. I'm juggling between that, Call of Duty Warzone, and The Last of Us Part Two. And of that whole lot, The Last of Us is the only recent game there. And I still feel overwhelmed. So there are games to be played, whether it be part of your backlog or just waiting for the next release. And they are coming. It just feels like a more dire time for the games industry than it is because announcements are sporadic and we're waiting for the next big hardware. Nintendo isn't helping things much with their silence, but they've gotta have something up their sleeve, right? Are they just gonna release nothing for the holidays? We still don't know much about Bayonetta 3, Metroid Prime 4, or Breath of the Wild 2 other than that they exist and are in development. This year has definitely been weird, and the end of the year will probably be wild, but right now, for many of us, I guess it's time to catch up on that backlog. So what do you guys think about the state of the games industry right now? Is there enough keeping you occupied? Is there too much? Are you satisfied with the announcements we've been getting this summer? Did you wish they were all nice and neat in one week? Are you optimistic about the holidays and the new consoles? There's a lot to take in, I know. Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, or any and all this other social media garbage. Of course, we got new videos and live streams all the time. Our schedule is usually in a pinned tweet over on our Twitter. We got Wolfden Live every single Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time here on YouTube. And we got streams on twitch.tv slash Wolfden, where we can hang out and chat usually play some Mario Maker, maybe some Smash Brothers, and every once in a while some Warzone. I'm all over the place. That, that This is, you can understand why I might feel overwhelmed. And again, thank you very much, Trade, for sponsoring this video. And that hunk coffee, let me tell you, that makes a damn good espresso. Huck, it's called Huck Coffee. Do not look up hunk coffee. Of course, the most important thing that you can do and the easiest thing is just subscribe to this channel. That's it, it's free. And share this video with a friend, a friend who might be in a lull with nothing to play and wants to relate. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a good week.